So I have this wonderful scrawler box here. We're gonna do this. We've got this, guys. Like, I don't know which one this is. Okay, so this one was sent in the end of September, so does this make it the October box? I think this is the October box, if that's how that works. Yes, I'm filming the October box in February, but don't judge me. Oh, come on. I literally just, I'm struggling. All right, here we go. Whoa, ooh, water, water. So we got some Koi watercolors, pocket field sketch box. So it's a little mini watercolor palette with several colors and it comes with, I guess, the brush and a little sponge. And inside here, apple flavored candy sticks. We got our scrawler box sticker. A Koei Noor Hardemuth 1500 4B pencil, a Stradler Tri Plus fine liner, and the Koei Noor fiber brush pen. And then the paper that we have in here is the Botanical Ultra Smooth watercolor paper. So that's very, very exciting. And of course, the artist, I think I know who this is. Liz LaPointe! Yes, I follow her on YouTube. She's great. She's really good at watercolor. So if you want to watch watercolor videos and traditional art, I definitely recommend her. If you want to check out her YouTube, there it is right there. Okay. Ah, oh, that's really cute. I, I love these little thingies. I keep collecting them. But I really want to open this first. <laughs> There's 12 colors. Yes. If you don't know or haven't been around my channel, I really wanted to get into watercolors and I went and bought these really nice watercolors and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm slowly learning. So this is exciting to try. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I, just, oh my gosh. I wish I had my full set to like put them next to each other. Ah, hey, white, get in there. There you go. Oh, look at this. It's like, oh, this is cute. I can't get over this. I'm sorry. This is really, really cute. I love tiny things. In your hand and your hands look so big and they're so tiny. Now I'm gonna go fill this with water. Burr back. All right, so I filled it with water. Don't know if you can tell because I filled it pretty freaking well if I do say so myself. Um, there's no bubbles or anything. All right, so that's full of water. We've got our sponge. This we don't want to lose. Where can I put that? That's safe. Uh, we got our 12 colors. Our sponge. Okay. Oh, there was actually instructions on here. Silly me. Uh, remove that. Black cap, remove black cap from reservoir barrel and fill with water, screw brush on barrel, counterclockwise. Yeah, I figured that out. I was actually pretty smart. And um, gently squeeze water through brush fibers. Where'd I put my, uh... <laughs> oh, I like this. Look how tiny this is. It's so cute. Oh, if you're wondering what colors it comes with, Chinese white, lemon yellow, permanent yellow, deep, vermilion hue, crimson lake, Prussian blue, cobalt blue hue, viridian hue, permanent green pale, yellow ochre, light red, and ivory black. Yellow ochre is a color I use like crazy in my other set. So that's, I'm glad that it came with that. I use that for skin. You mix it with like a little, uh, the uh, Prussian blue and red, and you get a really nice skin color. Not a lot of blue, or you will have weird looking people, but that is something you can do. Right, I think I'm ready. I feel like I should go outside and film with this, but it's freezing cold. So maybe if I had opened this in October, it would have happened. Actually, no, it was really cold in October. I take that back. I feel like since it's a tiny <laughs> envelope set, I should draw something really tiny. Would that be cute or would that be weird? Oh, I don't have my uh, my tape. If I had my watercolor tape with me, this would I could just do a little little cube. That would have been cute. What we need to do is draw something using the word escape. I've got an idea. I guess we'll sketch with this, even though there's no eraser. Oh, hello from the future. I decided to do the rest of this video as a voiceover because there were some things I forgot to mention in the actual recording and some other things. Um, one thing I need to clarify is that apparently this is actually the September box. I did some research on the scroller box Instagram and it looks like it's, yeah, indeed the September scroller box. So they send them in the same month that they are, but you don't get them till the next month, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I never realized that. So I've probably been saying them the wrong boxes this whole entire time. Um, but Scrollbox was nice enough to send me these boxes. I've been really, really, really behind in filming them. So that's all my fault. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's a struggle just to get like all the setup and the recording stuff that I need to do to film these. So that's really the main reason that's happened. But again, it's still all my fault. And I'm, I've kind of made a resolution with myself to 
try and at least post one scrawler box a month. We'll see how that goes. I really need to try. That won't catch me up, but it'll definitely really, really help. And I feel bad because I absolutely love filming scrawler box videos. They're ab so much fun. I almost said absolutely twice. That would have been awkward. Ooh. Um, this one, if I want to talk about what I'm actually doing. Um, so the theme was escape. And so your challenge was to draw something um, with the word escape. And I really, really wanted to just draw someone escaping from the world was my first idea. And I drew this door. And it was supposed to be like sort of like an introverted or shy person escaping from themselves and getting outside into the world. Um, but it really wasn't working out. I tried out a few color schemes and it just really, it just really didn't turn out. So I decided to go with my next idea, which I thought was going to be really, really difficult to draw an explosion with watercolors, but I found it to actually be quite easy and a lot of fun. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just drawing this cool action girl, like from a Terminator movie or something, you know, running away from a giant explosion. Um, a lot of this, of the idea with it was inspired by, um, some fan art. I received from my friend Renee Violet of Manga Girl um, on my birthday last year. <laughs> I didn't even think about that till I was halfway through with this, and I was like, this reminds me a lot of that picture she drew for me. <laughs> I guess I just had it, like, back there in my brain, and it just popped out, so that's cool. <laughs> anyway, um, I decided to draw this, and at first it was like a mushroom cloud, if you see, but then I realized that, I mean, that means it's really, really far away. And I kind of wanted it to be a smaller explosion that she was closer to. So, you know, she's probably getting hit by a little bit of shrapnel. Um, but I don't want her so close that the shrapnel would murder her. So it was kind of a little fight with myself to figure out <laughs> how far away this explosion actually was. And in the end, I just kind of left it where it was because I really... I don't really know how close you can be to an explosion and not die. The action movies make it seem like you could be in it and not die or even get injured in any way, so <laughs> there's that. Anyway, so to create the explosion, what I did was I just first, I colored it all in with my lightest yellow color, um, because I really didn't know where the brightest part of an explosion was. I ended up looking at a lot of references, and I kind of screwed it up, but I still really like the result. Um, so with an explosion, um, there's lots of little like pockets of the brightest color because that's where the most center of the explosion is. And as the explosion um, spreads outwards, it loses its brightness and it becomes more smoky and less fire. It's like a smoke. Like I don't, I don't actually know any of the technical terms for this um, because I'm not an uh, expert on this sort of thing. But <laughs> I really did enjoy drawing it. So next I work first I put a second layer of yellow on so that was just darker so that I could start creating the little bubbly shapes of the explosion. Then I took this orange color and mixed it in with the yellow and again was just adding depth to the explosion. I really like the way this looks actually. It looks really really cool. Um, and then once that looked good I started adding some red on some more of the outermost uh, explosion, I guess. Um, one thing that I really messed up on, I think, was that I made the center too dark. So like around her face, um, like around her body, like it's just too dark. I think that should have been the brightest part and then her silhouette would have shone through better. That's like my biggest regret. But for the rest of it, I really, it was really fun. I definitely recommend drawing explosions. Like if you enjoy that sort of thing, it's, it's a, definitely a lot of fun. And I really enjoy watercolors. They're just calming. Like you can make mistakes and trust me, I made them, <laughs> but it's really, really fun. Um, to just, you know, throw water and ink on paper and the, and the different techniques you can get and the little experimenting that I'm still doing because I'm so new to this. It's just, it's definitely a lot of fun. Another thing I fix later on is that the explosion is sort of like off to the left right now. So here I am fixing that right hand and like extending the explosion to the edge of the paper. Um, I didn't, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I didn't have my tape with me. My, uh, I don't know what it's called. It might be called painter's tape or something that you put on the edges of your paper so that you have a nice cool edge and you don't get <laughs> your ink all over your <laughs> table, but I didn't have that. Um, so it wasn't able to make a really cool edge, but I still had fun. So it, it's fine. Like, art's all about just making messes anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> um, here I added little polka dots. I mean, they wouldn't be called polka dots. It's more like the shrapnel coming off from the explosion all over it. Like little, just little bloop, 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 bloops of ink in different colors. I used some black and some orange. I don't think I used any yellow because you wouldn't have seen it. 
and that's what I did for the explosion. And then I realized she needs to be a lot darker so that she's more of a silhouette because the the light source is behind her. So I started, I really was nervous about making it too dark. So what I did was I just slowly layered like purples and blacks and blues like on her to create like a shadow. And here you can see I put like way too much ink on. And I was really, really nervous, but it ended up drawing lighter. And again, I'm still experimenting. So I should have known that I suppose that it was going to dry lighter, but I was scared. So I was using like a paper towel to like blop it out. Um, so another thing I forgot about watercolors is how long it takes because you have to like do a layer and then I went and played Pokemon and then I do another layer and then I went and played Pokemon and it was like it was becoming time consuming and then it, it basically got to the point where I was like no I want to keep watercoloring and then like well I gotta take a break so then I'd start Pokemon and then we're like oh, I don't want to stop playing Pokemon but I gotta finish this film before it gets dark so it's like I was like fighting myself the whole way through because like I want to do this no now I want to do this but it, it also like kept it exciting. Like, it was always fun to, like, flip around, even though my brain wanted to do something else. I don't know how to explain that. Um, here, I'm getting a little bit more adventurous. I'm like, I really like the way the black looks in the explosion. So now I'm just, like, throwing it on there and hoping for the best. And I think this really, really helped make it look like an explosion. I just, I love the <laughs> shading and the crazy hard edges. Because explosions are just, I don't know if organic, organic probably is the word. For their shape because they're just so like there's no hard edges in an explosion unless you've got like some missiles or something popping out of there or like a specific uh, shape of shrapnel just like <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be very very soft looking so that is what I was you know thinking about while I was doing it and again I'm adding more black so I'm trying to combat the issue that I mentioned earlier that I thought it was too dark in the middle so by making it darker on the outside it's making the center look a little bit brighter it doesn't look as bright as those little yellow circles around her head I wish there was some more of that yellow right behind her head that would have looked really really cool um, and then here I went a little crazy with it. I was like, <laughs> so now basically when I started the drawing, it was the beginning of the explosion. And now, now to the end of this drawing or this painting, it's becoming the explosion that's slowly starting to die away and the smoke is coming off of it instead. So it's almost like it's an animation from beginning to end of the speed paint, which is cool. I mean, if I hadn't recorded this, I wouldn't have ever been able to see that again. So it's kind of cool that I can rewatch it and see the different stages of the explosion. Um, here again, I'm trying to darken her without making it super muddy and not be able to see, like, the pencil lines. Um, and I decided to also color in the ground. Um, it, I'm picturing it. She's running on, like, a grass or, like, an airplane. I don't know, something with grass. So... I colored it really bright yellow near the explosion. So again, that's the brightest point of the drawing or painting. <laughs> and then as it gets closer to where the camera or the edge of the paper is, it gets more green. kind of want to add, I don't like that color of green. I think I edited or changed that color a little bit. But right now it looks very bright green and I don't like that. Um, yeah, here I'm darkening that. Okay, that's better. <laughs> there was this pause in the film and I was just trying to like talk myself through nothing happening. <laughs> so that was boring. <laughs> anyway, here I am fixing what I said I was going to fix. I made it a little darker. So again, it just look it's almost adding a vignette to the the painting because the brightest part of the painting is the center back of the painting, so it should get darker the farther out it gets. So that works pretty well. Again, adding a huge layer of dark black bluish purple paint on top of her um, and every time I do it it looks like I messed up and I'm like oh I ruined the drawing every time I added a new layer I'm like yep it's gone now but then look do you see that I edited it so that <laughs> it would show when it was dry and it's just so much lighter so again I'm like now about this time is when I realize okay I think I know what I'm doing like <laughs> I can add a really dark layer and come back later and it's gonna be lighter so I'm like I just gotta go crazy on this and it really I think definitely experimenting with watercolors and figuring out how they work is very helpful to creating a better illustration. So that, just drawing this, I learned a lot. Um, and I had a lot of fun with these watercolors. Whew, I love this set. I want to like try and like paint something outside with it or something. Maybe when it gets, when it's summer, that would be fun or something to try. I don't know. <laughs> um, here, I think I'm just finishing up. I don't know how much is left. I do add some sort of a line art with the purple pen because I realized, oh, here it is. <laughs> I realized I hadn't used it yet, and it kind of part of the challenge is to use all of the tools, which I fail a lot. <laughs> but I was like, not today. 
So here I'm using that purple and just creating a line art just so it's just so it shows through a little bit better. Since um, the color of the pencil is very similar to the color I used to color in the girl, it just seemed important to, to just add a little separation with that. So the purple worked for that. It looks a little off because there's no other purple colors in this painting, but I had to use all the tools. If you don't like the way it ended up in the end, then you can just pause it way back when and say, oh, that was a good video. <laughs> and then here I realized I had to use this green. So basically with the green, I just decided to fill in all the color parts of the drawing that I thought would be black with the green. I guess it was a weird style choice. I don't really love it, but I had to use the tool again, and I wasn't sure where to put it. I could have, I suppose, done it, used it for the grass or something, but I like the way this turned out a little better than if I had done that. So, And I also added a little design to her shirt because it was a little blah. Yeah, I think that's just about it. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out some of my other Scrawlerbox videos, I'll have a link to the playlist. And if you would like to get purchase your own Scrawlerbox subscription service where you get um, art supplies shipped to your door every single month. It's like a Christmas present. It's crazy. Um, you can see there'll be a link in the description where you can purchase your own Scrawlerbox subscription. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.